Okay, welcome back. We're going to wrap things up here in a second. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes. Anyway, here's where we left off last time. We have this big bad equation here. This is the aggregate expenditures model. This is income. This is kind of a picture of our economy. How's our economy doing? This is like GDP. What's going on? And these are the autonomous things that can change. Consumers can change their spending if they get wealthier, if they expect good times or something that's not necessarily related to their income. Businesses will increase business investment due to things like um, interest rates, but also their expectations of the future, what might happen. The government can spend money here. We said the government's going to expect spend $200 billion more. What happens to our economy if this certain thing happens? It doesn't just go up by 200. It goes up by this thing 200 times this thing called the multiplier, 1 over 1 minus b. And that's what we're going to talk about really quickly right here. Let's draw a new list here. So here's this multiplier thing up here. Let's talk about that for a second. What is this multiplier? Well, it has to do with b's part of it, which is the marginal propensity to consume. Let's assume the marginal propensity to consume is 0.9, or we spend 90% of our income. Then this little thing becomes 1 over 1 minus b, which is 0.9. So we go 1 over 1 minus 0.9. That's 1 over 0.1, right? Since uh, 1 minus 0.9 is equal to 0.1. So we've got 1 over 0.1. And that, if you do the math, is equal to 10. So we have this multiplier of 10. What is the multiplier when we think about it in words? What it means is if the government spends money, what did we say last time? It goes up 200 billion. If the government spends 200 billion, what happens is a person might get the 200 billion or a part of it, and they spend some of it. They spend 90% of it. So you have 200 billion and 90% of it gets spent, what is that, 180 billion. So the idea is it doesn't end there because somebody else is getting the 180 billion and they're going to spend some more. So the economy goes up by 200 billion. If, they, if the government spends money on, a, on new f highways, then these guys are building highways and we get $200 billion worth of highways. Then the people who made the highways get extra money, $180 billion. They spend $180 billion and they can spend it on cars, they can spend it on computers, they can spend it on desks, whatever. So we get another $180 billion worth of GDP. And then 90% of that, what would that be? Oh, that'd be at least, um, well, 9 times 8 is 72, 9, 7, that's another $162 billion, and so on and so on and so on. People keep getting the money, they keep spending it and saving some of it, and these numbers all add up. This is an increase in income, an increase in GDP by more than just the $200 billion. By how much more? Well, it turns out the answer is right here. Look at that. 10 times A plus I plus G. That's why we did this particular math. So we can understand that when the government increases spending by 200, the GDP or the income or the economy doesn't improve just by 200. It improves by 200 times 10. So it improves by 200 times 10. We'll add another zero. It improves by Y goes up by how much? 2,000 or 2 trillion. So the government is spending 200 billion. These guys get it, they spend some, these guys get some, they spend some, and GDP goes up by more than that. That's what's so important about this number here, the multiplier. That's why this equation is so interesting. That's why it explains the Keynesian philosophy. If there's a problem, if this income, if GDP is not full employment GDP, meaning not everybody's employed and it's less than it should be, then the government has a problem. This gap, this employment gap, this GDP gap needs to be solved. If the gap is $2 trillion or $2,000 billion, what should the government do? That's what this equation is explaining. How much should the government increase spending? The government should increase spending by $200 billion because the multiplier is 10 and they get this final impact of $2 trillion. That's what Keynesian economics is all about. Keynesian economics is all about the government increasing spending when businesses are going down and not spending, when consumers aren't spending, and we get this kind of impact here on our economy by more than what the government spends, by more than the 200. Okay, that was kind of in words how this equation works. We have a multiplier effect. This we derived last time. 1 over 1 minus b, or 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. As governments increase their spending, 
the economy improves by more than what they've increased. That's the big result. We're going to talk more about it. I think I better squeeze in one more with one clean math problem for you to understand. Uh, I'll see you there.